and thank him for his spirit that is life-giving. His spirit that is life-giving. It's by his spirit that we have life. He said, the words that he speaks to us, they are spirit and they are life. They are the ones that can resurrect every good thing that has been dead. Everlasting Father, we just want to thank you this morning. You that is the resurrection and the life, we thank you for the power of your resurrection. We thank you, Lord, for the commemoration of your resurrection this morning. Thank you for all that you have done for humanity. Even when our lives were not pleasing unto you, you went on the cross and you gave it. You gave your own life that we may have life. We thank you for this beautiful morning. Thank you, Daddy, O Lord, because we can stand because of your resurrection. We have hope because of your resurrection. We have life because of re your resurrection. Everything that we need, you have provided even on the cross. And you took all the shame and the pain. And you, you went into the grave and you conquered death in victory. And you rose on the third day. We are grateful. Please accept our thanks in Jesus' name. This morning we pray that the power that is in your resurrection will be seen and will be encountered in this service today in the name of Jesus. As many of your children who are coming on site and connecting online, our Father, we pray this morning that the power in your resurrection will be encountered in every area of our lives. In the mighty name of Jesus, we give you all the praise. We give you all the adoration. Hallowed be your holy name. In Jesus' wonderful name, we are prayed. Amen.
I want you to just lift up your hands and begin to worship your maker. Worship Emmanuel, God with us. He lives in you and I. Father, we exalt you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus.
Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. Just give the Lord a wave offering. Just appreciate him for a moment. Give him praise that is worthy of his name. Give him a word of adoration that you made it to this Resurrection Sunday. Last year, it was virtually canceled, but God saw the fit that you will see this one. Just give him a word of adoration. God, thank you for your keeping grace. Thank you for your keeping mercies. Thank you that I've, that I've been counted worthy enough to celebrate the resurrection of my Lord and Savior this morning. Daddy, I'm grateful. I don't take it for granted. Blessed be your holy name, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we have worshiped. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You may be seated majestically in the presence of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Hallelujah. We're going to invite the HPCC dance team to give us a quick ministration this morning. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Can I get some of the ushers to remove this pulpit?
Hallelujah. Rise up, everybody, and declare that the power of resurrection will move in this house. The power of life. The power of health. The power of life. In the name of Jesus. We take authority of every power of death. Lift up your voice and say, Father, we take authority over every power of the grave, over every power of death. We command life. We command health in the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and make that declaration. The power of life, the power of life. We swallow every power of the grave. The power of health. The power of resurrection. We take charge in the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you. Lord, we bless you. Lord, we give you praise. We give you glory. We give you honor. We give you all adoration. You are worthy to be praised. You are worthy to be glorified. You are Lord. You are God. You are the Most High. You are the King of glory. You are the Elohim. You are the Elulam. Thank you, blessed Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Now I want you to pray for yourself that the power of life we speak in your life. That wherever there is the power of the grave or the power of death, the power of resurrection that swallows death, the power of resurrection that gives life, that power will be made manifest to you in the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and make that declaration that you bring yourself under the covenant of life. You bring yourself under the power of life. Lord, I thank you for the power of life. In Christ Jesus. Thank you, King of glory. Thank you, Almighty God. We bless your name. We worship you. We adore you. We give you praise. We give you glory. We give you honor. Blessed, blessed be your holy name. Thank you, blessed Father. Thank you, King of glory. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Now, yesterday evening, we usually have our workers meeting on Saturday night. We do it via Zoom. And there were some workers who came. Some did not come. They missed. Big deal. Those who were there yesterday night, was it great? We shared something. I will share with the entire house. Hebrews chapter 7, verse 16. Hebrews 7, verse 16. We looked at it from the New Living Translation. The Bible says, Jesus became a priest not by meeting physical requirement of belonging to the tribe of Levi, but by the power of life that cannot be destroyed. Kai. Now, if you weren't there, it would be difficult to understand it. We, we, we took it from the roots and explained it. To the workers. But I want you to just believe it that there is a power of life that cannot be destroyed. There is a power of what? That cannot be what? Destroyed. The Bible says Jesus became our priest not by physical requirement in the Old Testament but by the power of life that cannot be destroyed. I want you to lift up your voice and say, Father! By the power of life that cannot be destroyed, I begin to live from today in the name of Jesus. The power of life that cannot be destroyed. The power of life that sickness cannot destroy. That demons cannot destroy. That the evil one cannot destroy. I begin to live from today in the name of Jesus. That power of life speak in my life. That power of life speak in my life. Thank you, Jehovah. Thank you, King of glory. We bless your name. We give you all the praise. We give you all the glory. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Everlasting Father, eternal of ages, we thank you. 
thank you for this resurrection morning. Thank you for choosing to die for us. They didn't take your life, you gave it up. So that we can live. Daddy, we thank you. Daddy, above your death, we are thanking you for your resurrection. Thank you because it's your resurrection that makes us Christians. It's your resurrection that gives us the hope of glory. It's your resurrection that gives us life. Is your resurrection that helps us to know that it is finished. Lord, we thank you that they will bless you. This morning we are asking that the power of resurrection will be made manifest even in mighty dimensions of grace in the name of Jesus. Thank you, blessed Father. Glory be to your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Let the people of God say a better amen. amen. If you are glad that Jesus rose, can you give a clap offering to the Most High? Give a clap offering to the King of Glory. Please, be the Lord bless you. In the first service, we shared with them on the topic, God can raise the dead. God can do what? Can raise the dead. In this second service, we are going to be sharing with you on the power of resurrection. The power of what? Resurrection. The Bible tells us when you read in the book of Philippians in chapter 3, in verse 10, Philippians 3, verse 10, said that I may know him and the power of his resurrection. And the fellowship of his sufferings be made conformable unto his death. There's something called the power of resurrection. And Paul was asking that he wanted to know Christ and not just know him physically alone, not just knowing his name, but he also wanted to know the power of his resurrection. I told them in the first service that this knowing is not just for head knowledge is supposed to be experiential, is to have an encounter with the power of resurrection. And everybody hearing me, those who are online, those who are in the church, wherever you are, and those who will hear this message at a later time, you will experience the power of resurrection in the name of Jesus. Now, the power of resurrection is the greatest power that God has manifested to man. Bible says in the book of Ephesians in chapter 1, when you read between verse 18 and verse 21, he said, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened. He said that you may know what is the hope of his calling and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints and what is the exceeding greatness of his power, the exceeding greatness of his power to us what who believe according to the working of his mighty power. And what is that power he's talking about? He said in verse 20, which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in heavenly places, far above principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come. What we are saying is the power of resurrection does not only work in this world, it also works in the world to come. And I, I, I want you to please put that at the back of your mind because the power of resurrection is going to work in your life even from this day in the name of Jesus. Amen. Now, the, the word resurrection simply means to bring back to life, to raise from the dead, to, to, to bring back to life. And many may be wondering, is it easy to bring somebody back to life? Bible says in Acts of the Apostles, in chapter 26, Acts of the Apostles, chapter 26, in verse 8, he said, why does it seem incredible? Why should you think it's an incredible thing with God that God should raise the dead? That God should raise the dead. So it's not incredible. It's not something unusual. It's not something out of this world. If you look at that passage in the NIV, NIV, New International Version, the verse 8, the Bible tells us, NIV, give us NIV. God bless you. 
the Bible tells us, let me look at it in the New Living Translation. He said, why does it seem incredible to any of you that God can raise the dead? That God can do what? Raise the dead. God can raise the dead. So it's not an incredible thing. It's a natural phenomenon. God can raise the dead. The NIV version says, why should any of you consider it incredible that God raises the dead? Not just can, he does it from time to time. He's always raising the dead. And some of you will be wondering, ah, we don't hear about the dead rising. How can you say he's always doing it? I want to let you know he's always doing it. And you are going to see the examples this morning. Now, the Bible tells us about the resurrection of Jesus. And the Bible tells us that he's actually the firstborn from the dead. Colossians 1, when you read in verse 17 and verse 18, he said, and he's before all things, and by him all things consist. And he is the head of the body, the church. Who is the beginning? The firstborn. From where? From the dead. So Jesus is the firstborn from the dead. Not just the firstborn. He's the first example to us. That God can raise the dead. No wonder when you read in Matthew 27, between verse 50 and verse 54. Matthew 27, verse 50 and verse 54. The Bible says when Jesus was on the cross, he cried with a loud voice. And he yielded the Holy Ghost. And you know the cry he had, the last cry, was it is finished. <laughs> oh my God, that should excite somebody. The last cry was what? It is finished. It is finished. And then the Bible said, Jesus, when he had cried with a loud voice, he yielded the Holy, he yielded the, the ghost. And then, be, and, he be, and behold, verse 51, and behold, the veil of the temple was rent in twain, from the top to the bottom, and the earth did quake, and the rocks rent. And in verse 52, the Bible says, and the graves were opened. And many bodies of the saints which slept arose. Now, please take note. Those who arose were the saints that slept. He said, many bodies of the saints which slept arose, verse 53. And the Bible says, and came out of the graves after his resurrection. They came out of his grave after whose resurrection? So Jesus is the firstborn. But after his resurrection, saints arose. And they went into the holy city and they appeared unto many. Hello? I, I know it's a, an incredible thing to hear. Really? Did people rise like that? Are you sure it's not a fable? Are you sure it's not a story? <laughs> and the Bible says in verse 54, Now when the centurion and they that we are with him, watching Jesus, saw the earthquake, and those things that were done, they feared greatly, saying, Truly, this was the Son of God. I want you to please understand, it's not incredible with God <laughs> to raise the dead. Are you listening to me? God is able to raise the dead. In Luke 24, when you read between verse 1 and 8, we want to see the example of that firstborn resurrection. The resurrection of the firstborn from the dead. In Luke 24, verse 1 to 8, they say, Now upon the first day of the week, very early in the morning, they came unto the sepulchre, bringing the spices which they had prepared, and sat in others with them. And they found the stone rolled away from the sepulchre, and they entered in, and found not the body of the Lord Jesus. They didn't find his body. And they were wondering, what happened to his body? What is it that happened to him? <laughs> and it came to pass, verse 4, as they were much perplexed, there about, behold, two men stood by them in shining garments. These were angels. And as they were afraid and bowed down their face to the earth, they said unto them, why seek ye the living among the dead? Why are you looking for the living among the dead? There is somebody hearing me. God is taking you from the camp of the dead. Because there are many dead men walking on the streets. And they don't even know they are dead. Bible says they that live in pleasure are dead while they are alive. And they think they are living in pleasure. But by God's standard, they are dead men. But the Bible is saying that you and I is removing us from the camp of the dead. They will not look for us in the camp of the dead. They will not look for you in the cemetery. They won't look for you in the mortuary. They won't look for you in the camp of the dead. In the name of Jesus. And the Bible says he's not here. 
Verse 6. <laughs> he's not here, but he's risen. Remember how he spoke to you when he was yet in Galilee. Say, the Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified. And the third day rise again. And they remembered his words. You will remember this message. And it will be for good. In the name of Jesus. You will remember that there is a power of resurrection. So the power of resurrection is real. Can you say it after me? The power of resurrection is real. Say it very loud. Say it one more time. It's real. Very real. Very real. And I want you to know that it is that power of resurrection that Abraham believed. In Hebrews 11, when you read between verse 17 and verse 19, that made him to offer Isaac. 